Okay, so this is part three of the um of the exam. So we're going to start with number forty-three. So it says um complete the identity. So we have sine theta divided by one plus sine theta minus sine theta divided by one min one minus sine theta, and we need to know what does that equal. So we're not proving anything. We just got to um, simplify it. So here we are. Sine theta. Sine theta. Minus sine theta. Over one minus sine theta. And then we got to know what this simplifies. So so let's um let's get a common denominator. What is our let's get a com since we're subtracting we need a common denominator. So our common denom common denominator is one plus sine theta one minus sine theta. <coughs> so we got to multiply this side by one plus sine theta. one plus sine theta and then multiply this by one minus sine theta so when you foil this out you're going to get so it's one times theta one times sine theta is sine theta and then a negative sine theta times sine theta is negative sine square theta Minus, and then I'm going to put brackets because I have to multiply this whole thing. So it's sine theta times 1 is sine theta. And then sine theta times sine theta is plus sine square theta. Bracket all over 1 minus sine theta. 1 plus sine theta. So let's simplify the numerator, the top. So this just stays the same. So I'm going to just bring that down. Then I'm going to distribute this negative. So it's going to be minus sine theta minus sine square theta all over the denominator. So I could simplify the denominator. If you, sim if you foil this out, this is going to be a perfect square, so it's going to be 1 square is 1 minus sine square theta. So yeah, when you foil this out, this is what you get. Let's still simplify the um, top. Let's see if anything cancels. So the sine theta cancels because you have a positive and negative. And over here, you have a negative sine, the ne negative sine square theta and negative, square negative sine square theta. So that's going to be negative 2 sine square theta all over uh, 1 minus sine square theta. Um, I'm going to use this identity. Uh, let's see, I'll put it right here. Sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals 1. So if I subtracted, I need this to look something like this. So if I subtract sine square theta, from both sides, I will get, put it right here, 1 minus sine square theta. And you're just left with cosine square theta on the left. So I can replace this 1 minus sine square theta with cosine square theta. So that's going to be negative 2 sine square theta over cosine square theta. Okay, so we have a negative 2 sine square theta over cosine square theta. So what is, that almost looks like an identity. It sounds like sine square theta over so cosine square theta is 
tangent theta, but since there's a square, we can call that tangent. We can replace this sine square over theta over cosine square theta by tangent theta, tangent square theta. So your final answer is negative two tangent square theta. That was 43. Let's do 44. So on 44, it says establish an identity. So you have 1 plus secant square, secant square x times sine square x equals secant square x. So this is a little, this is where you have to prove it. This is not on, yeah. It's a little bit different from 43, so, but the only difference is we have to prove one side equals to another, the same side. So I'll show you. That was, this is 44. So 44 says you have one plus secant square x times sine square x equals secant square x. So what I have to do is, let's see here. When you ever, when you do a problem like this, you gotta pick, you gotta tell um, whoever's grading it um, which side you're gonna pick. So I will pick, I, uh, I'll start with the left side. So state what side you're going. So I'm gonna start with left side. So let's see, what can I simplify? Let's simplify the secant square, the secant square x. So, okay, so the one stays the same. So I'm gonna put that one plus, what is secant square? One over cosine square, one, well, one over cosine square x. One over cosine square x. And then you have to times it by the sine square x equals secant square x. Let's simplify this one. So it's um, 1, the one stays there. And then you have sine square x over cosine square x. And that gives us secant square x. So what is, we can simplify this. That's like saying y over x. What, what is y over x tangent? But the thing is, we have a square, so it's going to be one. It's going to be tangent square x. So it's going to be one plus tangent square x equals secant square x. So now I, I'm almost done. I just have to. Rem, rem, I'm going to use this identity. One plus. Tangent square x equals uh, secant square x. So the goal for this identity is this thing, 1 plus tangent square, looks like this, right? So we can replace this 1 plus tangent square with secant square x, because they're the same thing. So secant square x equals secant square x. So that's true. And that's how you prove prove um I prove an identity. That was 44, 45, same we same same concept, we gotta prove an prove an identity, so we gotta prove one side equals to the other. So let's do 45. So we have cosine square x minus sine square x equals 1 minus 2 sine square x. So you got to choose, you got to tell what side you're going to pick. So I'm going to start with left side. Start with left side. So um, let's see, we have a cosine square x minus sine square x. So 
over here, I'm going to I'm going to use my identity of sine square x plus cosine square x equals one. So I got to make this look like this on the right side somehow. So what can I do? Um, let's put let's see. Let's put everything in terms of sine square x. So this is cosine square x. Let's it could be replaced. So let's use this identity. Let's um, get cosine square x by itself. So what I can do is subtract sine square x from both sides. So you have cosine square x equals one minus sine square x. So you can replace cosine square x with this. So cosine square x equals one minus sine square x and then we bring this down minus sine square x equals this one minus two sine square x so let's simplify this part so we the one still stays the same so it's one so you have a negative sine square x and a negative sine square that's negative two sine square x and then this equals to the left i mean the right So that's true. So that's how you prove this identity. Let's see what's 40. If I was 45, let's do 46. So 46 says sine x times tangent x times cosine x minus cotangent x times cosine x equals 1 minus 2 cosine square x. So you got to state what side I'm going to choose. So I'm going to start with left side. Start with left side. Let's see here. So let's simplify. I'll, so when you FOIL this out, right, you're going to get sine x. When you FOIL this sine x, distribute the sine x, you're going to get sine x times tangent x times cosine x minus cotangent x times cosine x and then times the sine x. Let's see, now we, we can simplify. So the sine x stays the same. Tangent x is the same thing as sine x over cosine x. And then times it by cosine x. And then, then I'm going to simplify this part. So it's going to be minus, I'm going to put bracket this time. What is cotangent? Cotangent in terms of sine and cosine x is cosine x over sine x times it by cosine x, times it by sine x. Let's see, now we, let's see if anything cancels. So let's see, let's start with this part. What cancels? The cosine x. So you're left with um, two si sine x times sine x, which is sine square x, minus, let's see here, what cancels? The sine x. So you're left with cosine square x, minus cosine x, cosine square x, right? Because you have to just read this negative. Equals one minus two cosine square x. So now I'm gonna use this identity, the sine square x plus cosine square x equals one. 
So, okay. Um, we can, let's see, Science Core X. Let's put everything in, in terms of cosine square x. So this, I'll just leave this negative cosine square x. The same. I'm just going to leave it alone. So let's replace sine square x by using this identity in terms of cosine square x. So what I can do is subtract sine square x from both sides. So you're left with cosine square x equals 1 minus sine square x. So you can replace, wait, did I do this right? Whoops, messed up. Made a mess. We want it in terms of cosine x, excuse me. Wait, I did it right. No, I didn't. Oh, let's see. No, I did it right. So we want in terms of cosine x, cosine square x. So if I, I subtract negative sine square x from both sides, you're left with cosine square x equals 1 minus sine square x. No, I, I'm sorry, I made a mis made a mistake. Sorry. Yeah, we want it in terms of cosine square x, so wait. So what I'm gonna do is subtract I'm gonna replace this sine square x. So I'm gonna subtract cosine square x. That right, there we go. So this cancels, so you're left with sine square x equals 1 minus cosine square x. So now we can, so we want it all in terms of cosine square x, so we can replace this sine square x right here with 1 minus cosine square x. So it's going to be 1 minus cosine square x. Then I'm going to subtract, then you have a minus cosine square x equals 1 minus 2 cosine square x. So let's simplify like terms. So this one stays the same, so it's just 1. And then you have a negative cosine square x and a negative cosine square x, so that's negative 2 cosine square x. And then that equals 1 minus 2 cosine square x. So that's true. And that's how you prove this identity. Let's see. That's 46. 47 is complete the identity. So we're not proving it. We're not going to prove it. We're just going to simplify it. So 47 says. We have sine. Alpha plus beta. times cosine beta minus cosine alpha plus beta times by sine sine beta. So we gotta um we gotta figure out what this equals. So I'm looking at it and then if you look at this, this is what's called there's a formula called the sine of sum. So this is the sine of sum formula. And then if you look over here, this part, you have the cosine of sum, cosine of sum formula. So the sine of sum formula, it looks something like this. So 
So this thing looks like this. It's the sine alpha times cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine of beta. And then you have to multiply this by cosine beta. Minus, and then this is where I'm going to put brackets. The, so the cosine of sine cosine of some formula looks something like this. Cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And then you have to times that by sine of beta. So when you simplify it, this is what you're going to get on the left side. So you're going to get sine alpha uh, cosine square beta because you're distributing this cosine beta plus cosine alpha times sine beta times cosine beta. Sine beta times cosine beta. Now, when you distribute this sine beta, and then when you distribute the negative, you're going to get negative cosine alpha cosine beta sine beta plus sine alpha times sine square beta. Okay, so when you simplify this, things will cancel out, uh, cancel out. So this, this whole thing will cancel, this whole thing will cancel. So you're left with sine, sine alpha times cosine square beta plus sine alpha sine square beta and then we could actually factor something out we could factor that sine alpha so if you factor that sine alpha you get this cosine square beta plus sine square beta okay and then this thing, cosine square beta plus sine beta, is equal to 1 because we're going to use this identity, cosine square beta plus sine square beta equals 1. So it's sine alpha times 1, which is just sine alpha. So your final answer is just sine alpha. That was 47. Let's do 48. We gotta establish an identity, so this is where you have to prove it. So you have cosine x plus pi halves equals negative sine x. So, yeah, we got to prove one side. So I'm going to pick left side first. So right here, this cosine x plus pi half is also called the cosine sum. Cosine of sum. Where um, alpha equals x and then beta equals pi halves. So the cosine of sum is going to be cosine alpha, cosine alpha, which is x, 
times cosine beta, which is pi half, minus sine alpha, which is x, sine x, times sine of beta, which is sine of pi halves. Let's simplify. So cosine of pi half is um, 0. So 0 times cosine x. Oh, that's still 0 minus bracket. Let's see, sine of, sine of pi half is 1. And then you bring down sine x. So you're left with, um, so this is just 0. And then this is just sine x. And then you distribute that negative, so it's negative sine x equals negative sine x. So that's, we just proved it. That was 48. says it says solve the equation on the interval so we got to figure out what theta is we are solving um, sine square alpha time plus sine alpha sine theta so sine square theta plus sine theta equals zero so and then they said that in our boundaries is from zero to pi so let me clear this 49. And then our boundaries is from theta So let's see, my goal is to solve for theta. So what I can do is factor out sine theta on the left side. So I'm gonna factor out sine theta. And this is going to be sine theta plus one equals, um, hold on, did I write the problem wrong? Yep, I did. This should not be a 1, this should be a 0. So equals 0. So now I have two parts. I have a sine theta equals 0, and then a sine theta plus 1 equals 0. So my goal is to solve for theta. So for this part, I can multiply everything by sine inverse. So you're left with theta equals sine, oops, equals sine inverse of zero. And then this part you subtract one from both sides. So you have sine theta equals negative one. I mean, you, some people could stop from here, but if you really want to know what theta is, you can multiply everything by sine inverse. So you get uh, theta equals sine inverse of negative one. So what they're saying is and for this part, they're asking what degrees in radians is going to give you a sign of zero. So for this part, you, um, your theta would be pi and two pi because if you draw the unit circle, two pi is right here and pi is right here. So that gives us um, coordinate of one comma zero, and this gives us a coordinate of negative one comma zero. So sine is still zero. So that's our option for here. And then for negative, for theta when it's sine inverse of negative one, so it's like asking what degree in radians it's gonna give you an, a sine of negative one. I think our only option is three pi halves, because in three pi halves, we have a coordinate of 0, comma, negative 1, and sine is negative 1, so 3 pi halves. So our answers is pi, 2 pi, and 3 pi halves. That was 49.
let's do 50. It says solve the equation, give a general formula for all the solutions. So when they say give a general formula for all solution, we have to do the, that this involves like um, the k, pi k thing. So I'll go, so I'll show you what it means. This is 50, right? Yes. So we have cosine of 2 theta equals square root of 2 over 2. So this thing right here, cosine 2 theta, is um, Okay, so we gotta figure out what theta is. That's our goal. So the cosine of square root of two, we wanna get pi fourths because at pi fourths, we have a cosine of square root two over two and a sine of root two over two. So we want theta, we want, the, we want our theta is not gonna be, um, we want to get um, pi four, so our theta has to be our theta must be pi eighth because when you do cosine of two times pi eighths, um, this simplifies as cosine of pi fourth. That's what we want because cosine of pi fourth gives us the square root of two over two. So we know theta is uh, pi pi eighths. So if we know theta is pi eighths, okay, so, so tell me, um, pi fourths, where else can we get um, a positive cosine of square root 2 over 2? So pi fourths is one of our options. And then our other option is, um, 7 pi 8th. So 7 pi 8th is right here. We could call that, um, let's see, what is that? Hold on, let me get my unit circle. It would be um, 7 pi 4th. Right here, so this would be 7 pi fourth, because that also gives me a square root, a positive cosine of square root 2 over 2. And the sign's negative, but we don't care about the sign. We only care about cosine positive. So we can only use quadrant 1, quadrant 4, because quadrant 2 and quadrant 3 are all cos negatives. So our theta. is going to be pi eighths and then seven pi eighths. But this is where the part we're gonna to do to plus two pi k because they say all solution. So if you set k equals one, so if you say for this part, k equals one, that would be um, pi eighth plus two pi, which is pretty much if you set k equals 1, that would be 2 pi times 1, which is 360. So what that means from pi, pi eighths, pi eighths is right about here. If you go 360, you're still going to get this um, cosine of square root 2 over 2. The same thing with here. Same If you start at 7, 7 pi eighth and you added k and you let k equals 1, that means you have to go 360, you would still get the same cosine of positive square root 2 over 2. That was 50.
So 51 says 51 is we got to find all the solution of tangent theta of negative 1. This one's not too bad. So we have tangent theta equals negative 1. So some people could figure out at this part, like they're going to tell me where is tangent negative 1. But if you, if you want to take a step further, you can multiply this by tangent inverse. So you would say theta equals tangent in oh. So theta equal so what they're asking you what degree in radiance is gonna give you a tangent of negative one. So I think we can only use we can't use quadrant one. I think we could use quadrant two and we can't use quadrant three and Quadrant 2 and quadrant 4 is our only option. So we know in quadrant 2 is going to be um, 3 pi fourth because that gives the coordinate of negative square root 2 over 2 and then positive square root 2 over 2. If you take a tangent of that, you get negative 1. And then our other option is um, 7 pi fourths. So that gives us positive square root 2 over 2 and a sign of negative square root 2 over 2. And that still gives a tangent of negative 1. So we want all solutions. So at 3 pi fourths, this is where we could use the pi k, but we're not going to use 2 pi k. Instead, our answer is going to be theta equals 3 pi fourths plus k pi. So from where else is it going to give you um, tangent of negative 1? Uh, 7 pi, from 3 pi fourths. Okay, so let's say you said k equals 1, right? So that gives us 1 times pi, which is 180, right? So at 3 pi fourths, you're going to add an additional 180. So if you go one from 3 pi fourths, you go and you add 180, you're going to get up with 7 pi fourths which is still um, one of our answers. So that's why it's just k pi, not plus two pi k. Okay, that was 51, 53. Let's see, 52 actually. So on 52, I mean, was it 52 or 53? Yeah, 52. So on 52, we have this triangle. horrible triangle. This triangle looks like this. So they give us, um, what did they give us? They give us two degrees, so we got 30, 100. So this is 30 degrees, this is 100 degrees, and this is called gamma. So, and then what do they give us? What side do they give? We have, we, we need to find A and C, and we have one side. And and then we have one side which, which is 10. So this is where we're going to use the Sokotoa thing.
First off, um, let's find out gamma. What is that angle of gamma? So we know a triangle it has add up to 180. So we know this angle, 130 is 130, and then you just do 180 minus 130. So 180 minus 130 gives me 50 degrees. So gamma is 50 degrees. So this is 50 degrees. So now let's find length. So what I can do is, let me think. What's we could do? We got to find side length A or side length C. So what I'm going to do, you can do any, you can do cosine, you can do sine. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do just cosine of 50 degrees. So the cosine of 50 degrees is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's 50 degrees. What is our adjacent side? 10, right? Over hypotenuse. We Our hypotenuse is A. We don't know what A is. So we'll just call that A. And then we will cross multiply. So it's A times cosine of 50 degrees equals 10. My goal is to solve for A, so I'm going to divide everything by cosine of 50. Oops, 50. And then A equals, if you put this in the calculator, I would put it in parentheses. So I would do parentheses 10 divided by parentheses cosine 50 degrees. And then you should get A equals 15.55. And then let's find C. So you, you could do the Sokotoa thing, but we can also do the Pythagorean theorem. So you do the A squared plus B squared plus C squared. So we don't know what C squared is, so we're going to call this C squared plus uh, 10 squared because our B is. 10 equals um, okay so we, wait you understand that the C is not really the um, hypotenuse it's it's really like the a square because it's like one of the shorter side because how you know it's shorter because it's not it doesn't go with C goes with 50 degrees it's not the highest it is not the highest angle the highest angle goes with the highest highest side so our highest side is 15.55 and it goes with the highest degree which is 100 degrees so i so that's why our c is technically 15.55 let's solve for c which we're really solving for b so c square equals plus 10 squares 100 equals 15.55 subtract 100 so C squared is uh, 143.36. Take the square root of both sides. So C equals, um, the square root of that is 11.97. So C is really like technically B because it's just a side length. So C equals 11.97. So you just solved it, that triangle. Yeah, so just remember, the highest degree goes with the highest side. So our highest degree is 100 and our highest side. So our C is really technically 15.55. And then C is technically still B or A because it's one of those lower angle. It's 52. Let's do, let's see, I'm going to skip 53, wait, 
Yeah, I'm gonna skip 53. That's the only one I didn't think wasn't able to do. So I'm gonna do. Yeah, that was the 53. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm do 50, 54 if I can find it. I can. So 54, it says, solve the system equation by using substitution. So we're not going to do elimination. So we're given 5x minus 2y equals negative 1. And then you have x plus 4y equals 35. And then we got to solve this problem by using use substitution. Pretty simple. So you just, we'll call this equation one and this, we'll call this equation two. So what I'm going to do is get one variable by itself. So I'm going to use equation two and then I'm going to solve for x or get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract for y. So x equals 35 minus 4y. Now I'm going to plug in equation this x into equation 1 that's called substitution so it's going to be 5 times x which is this whole thing 35 minus 4y minus 2y equals negative 1 so that becomes 175 minus 20y minus 2y equals negative 1 so I get negative 22y plus 175 equals negative 1. Let's see, I'm going to subtract this. That's negative 176 divided by negative 22. So y equals positive 8. And then to solve for x, you put it either equation 1 or equation 2. So I'm going to put um, y into equation 2. So it's going to be x plus 4 times 8, because y is 8, equals 35. So x plus 32 equals 35, minus 32, minus 32. So x equals 3. Yeah, 3. And then you can check it by plugging it in. So I already checked it, and I know they're both true. So you get x equals 3 and y equals 8. Now it says solve the system. This says we could do it. It doesn't matter which way. So we're solving the system in two variables. How is 54? Five has nine x minus seven y equals ten. Eighteen x minus fourteen y equals fifty. So I'm going to do elimination. I'm going to do elimination. We'll call this equation one call this equation 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the equation 1 by negative 2, the whole thing. So you get negative 18x plus 14y equals negative 20. And then I'll bring down equation 2, so it's 18x minus 14y equals 50. So something weird happens here. The x and y variable all cancel. So when they all cancel, they're inconsistent. So there's no solution. So what that means is 
they are parallel. They are parallel, so they have the same slope. So they never touch. So what it means is when you graph these two lines, they're going to be parallel. So they never intersect. So that's why they don't have a solution. 55, let's do 56. We are graphing inequalities. So their inequalities are a little bit different from, they're almost the same thing as linear equation, but we're not going to graph it the same way as a linear way. We're going to graph it by finding the x-intercept and the y-intercept because when you do the shading, you'll see why. So this is 56. Oops. So 56 says we have negative x plus 2y is less than equal to negative 6. And then we have 3x plus 2y is greater than negative 18. So this is all in quality. So let's find, let's start with equa this part, equation one. I'll call that equation one. So how do I find the x-intercept? To find the x-intercept, you plug in zero for y. So it's going to be negative x and then plus two times zero. We're going to for right now, we're going to set this to equal negative 6. So this is going to be negative x equals negative 6. Divide everything by negative 1. x equals 6. So our x-intercept for this equation is 6 comma 0. Now, how do we find the y-intercept? For the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x. So it's going to be 0 plus 2y equals negative 6. Divide everything by 2, so y equals negative 3. So our y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 3. So we could find, now we can graph that part. So we can graph this one. So we said that our x-intercept is 0, 6, 0. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then our y-intercept is 0, 3. So it's 1, 2, 3. Now I'm going to use, am I going to use solid dash? I'm going to use solid because there's an equal sign. So it's going to be solid. This is, and then we'll call, label this graph negative x plus 2y equals negative 6. Okay, so this is now, we got to figure out, in, for inequalities, we, gotta, we have to do a shading. So for shading, for the equation 1, you have to pick a point that has never been, that it doesn't go through. We can simply use 0, 0 because it's pretty simple. So if you use the point 0, 0 as our x and our y, into equation one, you're gonna get you're gonna get zero plus zero because two times zero is zero, and then so it's gonna be zero less than equal to negative six. Is zero less than to equal to negative six? So if you made a number line, so here's zero, and whoop, here's negative six, and here's zero, right? Zero. That's false, right? Because zero is greater than negative six. So the point zero zero, wherever the the side is false you just shade the opposite side so if it was true it would we would shade this side but it's false we're going to just shade this part okay so i'm going to do a light shade because i gotta um shade the other part where they both meet so equation two let's figure that out so how to find the x-intercept for equation two you simply plug in y into 0, so it's going to be 3x 
and then plus 2 times 0 is 0, so it's two, 3x equals negative 18, divided by 3, so x equals negative 6. So our x-intercept is negative 6, 0, and then our y-intercept is, you simply plug in um, 0 for x, so it's 3 times 0 is 0, so it's 2y equals negative 18. Divide both sides by 2. So you get y equals negative 9. So our y-intercept is, where are we? Is 0, negative 9. So x is negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And our y-intercept is negative 9. So it's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here's negative 9. So it's this point. Now, am I going to do solid or dash? I'm going to do dash because there's no equal sign. So it's going to be dash, dash, dash. Now, I'm going to um, label this graph as 3x plus 2y equals negative 18. This is, now we have to do the shading. So I gotta get, pick a point that has not gone through. So I can use the point, I still can use the point zero comma zero. So if I put zero as the X value and zero on the Y value, you're gonna get zero is greater than negative 18. Is zero greater than negative 18? Yes. So I'm gonna shade this whole thing, but I'm only gonna, I should shade this whole part. See, we see we have a right side and a left side, so it's, we're going to shade this part. But I'm going to um, we need to shade the area where it's both where they both meet. So it's going to be this part, just this region. So you're going to dark circle this whole thing. Okay, so so that's how you graph this inequality. That was 56. Fifty-seven. So fifty-seven, we have this equation: x squared plus y squared equal less than equal to thirty-six, and then we have x squared plus y squared is greater than 25, greater or equal to 25. So I know these are a circle. It's, um, because remember a circle is like x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals radius. Okay, so it's, we don't have, it's just x squared plus y squared. We don't, there's no, the center is zero comma zero, right? So let's start with this part. Equation one. So how do we find the x-intercept? You simply um, okay. So wait, we okay. So we know the center is zero. That so we don't have to find the x-intercept because we know that yeah, we don't. We know the center starts at zero comma zero. And then we have a radius of six. It's always the square root of this. So it's square root of 36 is six. So we start at zero right here, one, and then we go right six, left six, up six, and down six. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is negative six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're going to do solid line because there's an equal. Mine's is not going to look like a circle. It's going to look like an oval. Okay. Now, can we use the point, now the shading, can we use the point 0, 0? Nope. 
because it, it passes, that is our center and it goes through that point. So we can't use zero comma zero. We can use this point, one comma zero. So if you plug in this point into the equation one, you get um, one square is one and then plus zero squared is zero. So it's plus zero. And then we're gonna set that, we're gonna say that is that less than equal to 36? Uh, yes, right, that's true. One is less than or equal to 36. So wherever that point is, you're gonna shade you're going to shade that area. So we have a right side and a left side. So it's good. we're going to just shade. I'm going to do a light shade. Let me see. A light shade over here, only for this region. Now I'm going to do equation two. We'll call this equation two. We'll put it right here. So this is as well as a circle, but the thing is, it has a radius of five because the square root of 25 is five so it has a center of zero zero so you start at zero and then you move up to five so this is five here negative five here five here and then negative five and then we're going to do a solid line because there's an equal sign Now we gotta do shading. We can't use zero zero, so we can we can use negative one comma zero. We can use the point negative one comma zero. And if you put that into equation, so negative one square is one. Y square is zero square, so it's just zero. So it's one greater than twenty five. Um, false, right? One is not greater than twenty five. It's less than. So at that point, we're gonna shade only this area. But the thing is, we gotta shade this part because we have to satisfy both areas. So I'm gonna pick another color. I'm gonna shade, I'll call it, use this red. Uh, <laughs> I think this works. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, okay. How this will, I don't know. So, I'm going to shade this area. This whole entire region. So that was 57. Clear the board. I don't know how to do this. Okay, wait. There we go. So on 58 it says we got to solve the system equation with three variables. So in like the last one we only had two variables x and y. And now we have a three variable x, y, and z. So this one's it can get a little uh, messy if you don't keep track of what you're doing. So we have I'll put it x. Whoops. We have x plus y plus Z, is this the last one? Yeah, this is our last one. So we have X plus Y plus Z equals four. And then we have X minus Y plus four Z equals 25. And then we have two X plus Y 
plus z equals 6. So I'm going to call this equation 1, equation 2, and equation 3. So let's see here. Let's look at equation 1 and 2. I want to get rid of this z, so I can multiply equation 1 by negative 4. So if you distribute negative 4 to equation 1, you're going to get negative 4x, negative 4y, negative 4z equals negative 16. And then I'm going to bring down equation 2, so you're going to get x minus y plus 4z equals 25. The z's cancels, which is what we want. So you're left with negative 3x minus 5y equals um, 9. Okay, we're going to call this equation A. So we're, this whole thing, call that A, equation A. Now, let's get rid of as another z as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use equation 1 x plus y plus z, and then I'm going to um, multiply equation 3 by negative 4. So equation 1 is x plus y plus z equals 4, and then equation 3, if you multiply negative 4 to equation 3, you're going to get negative 8, uh, negative 4y, and then negative 4z. Whoops, is that right? Or is it, hold on, I made a mistake. What I have to do, okay, so what I want to do is get rid of z. So, I'm actually going to multiply, I'm going to actually, to get rid of another z, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by positive 4. So you're going to get, wait, x minus Oh, okay, so I see what it did. So I'm going to get rid of the z. So look at equation 2 and 3. I want to get rid of the z, so I'm going to multiply equation 3 by negative 4 and then leave equation 2 by itself. So equation 2 is x minus y plus 4z equals 25. And then I'm going to multiply equation 3 by negative 4. So this is going to be negative 4. This is going to be negative 8x minus 4y minus 4z equals negative 24. So the z cancels, so you're left with x and a negative x is negative 7x. And then negative y and a negative 4y is negative 5y equals 25 minus 24 is 1. Okay, so we'll call this equation B. So now we're going to use equation A and equation B. So equation A is negative 3x minus 5y equals 9, and then equation B is negative 7x minus 5y equals 1. I can get rid of uh, y, right? So what I can do is multiply this the second equation by negative 1. So you're going to so that's left with negative 3x minus 5y equals 9. And that's going to give us positive 7x, positive 5y, and a negative 1. So this cancels. You're left with 5x equals 8. I mean, not 5x. It's 7 minus 3 is 4x, not 5. Divided by 4, divided by 4, x equals 2. Now we found x. So how can we find y? We can... We can substitute x into equation b. So 
it's going to be negative 7 times positive 2 minus 5y equals 1. So that's negative 14 minus 5y equals 1. You add 14 to both sides. So you get negative 5y equals 15 divided by negative 5, negative 5, y equals negative 3. So now we found x, y, and now let's define z. So how to find z, we could plug it into equation 1. I'll put it right here. So we know that x is 2, and our y is negative 3, and plus z. So I'm using equation 1, equals 4. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1, plus z equals 4. We're going to add 1 to both sides, so z equals 5. So if you now you can check it by plugging it into e either equation 1, 2, or 3, and you should, and I did already checked, so they both work. So our solution is x equals 2, y equals negative 3, and then z equals 5. That's your final lesson. And that wraps up for this part.